good <coughs> welcome to all in this lecture today today we are going to study the different speed control methods already we have seen the different spe speed control methods of three phase induction motor like changing of the poles then changing the stator voltage etc two we have seen now we are going to see the next one that is by changing the applied frequency of the input supply how we can change the or how we can control the speed of induction motor so before going to this we have seen the disadvantages in the class okay offline class so the disadvantage of changing the applied voltage method is that a large change in supply voltage is required suppose you want to control a speed of 20 to 30 rpm hundreds of voltage need to be decreased okay so large change in supply voltage is required for a, a relatively very small change in the speed okay so also this large change will cause the voltage okay or the supply voltage in a large change in flux density so this will disturb the magnetic conditions of the induction motor so because of such reasons the changing applied voltage method is not so convenient in order to prevent this kind of things we can go to the next method that is by changing the applied frequency so before going to this method okay we just need to take out the formula you can see here synchronous speed equals to 120 f upon p okay in rpm so the frequency is directly proportional to the synchronous speed so by changing as we can see in this formula by changing the frequency we can change the synchronous speed okay and p is the number of stator poles now here the synchronous speed can be changed with change in supply frequency as we can see as a straight forward technique but we also know that the actual speed of the motor that is the speed of the rotor is given as ns sorry is given as n okay which is synchronous speed times 1 minus the slip so now because of this okay this method of only changing the frequency of the stator voltage it, this method is not widely used okay not popularly used it can be used where the induction motor is supplied by a generator okay so that we can change the frequency of the generator by changing the speed of the prime mover so for these applications this method is suitable also in case of lower frequencies the motor current can become too high suppose we keep frequency as lower in order to decrease the speed the motor current may become very high because of the decreased reactance okay so when frequency decreases reactance also decreases and when if increase in frequency takes place in order to increase the speed of the motor beyond the rated value suppose the rated value is 50 hertz if we take the frequency above 50 hertz the maximum torque developed in the motor will fall okay so overall torque will all overall torque which has been developed it will be it will fall basically but the speed will rise so the torque requirement will not meet this method is also disadvantageous and not very popular so there is a new technique or a conventional technique or combinational technique here like we have to combine both techniques like we have to change the applied voltage with respect to the supply frequency so it is method is called as v by f method okay you can see here v by f okay we also know that the voltage equation of induction motor they have given here 4.44 f pi m okay 
k1 is torque kc and kd are the coefficients so now in case of constant voltage when we change the frequency the flux is also changing okay by looking at this method now we have to adequate or we have to meet the overload capacity so then the motor should maintain constant flux throughout the speed control so only frequency control is not allowed or only voltage supply voltage control is not allowed for the control of speed of induction motor now here in order to use v by f method in that method the flux will remain the same if the ratio of voltage and frequency remains constant so it becomes necessary to control the supply voltage and supply frequency to make the ratio of v by f constant this method is called as v by f method of speed control so as i said earlier v by f method is a combinational method of okay all the addition of two methods okay in a ratio manner in order to maintain the speed of induction motor so we have to keep this v by f ratio constant okay now we are going to see the how <coughs> the vfd control or the vf method okay now here to maintain this voltage and frequency ratio constant we have to use a device that is called as variable frequency drive okay vfd full form is variable frequency drive control so it is a device which maintains the ratio okay so this device or you can see here this is a block diagram okay so we are going to learn this how it works this vfd is also called as frequency converter okay which has this ha this has undergone extremely rapid changes in the decades okay for coming decades or till decades now this changes in this development of vfd it results in the development of microprocessor and semiconductor devices okay and because of this introduction of microcontroller and microprocessor and semiconductor devices okay solid state devices the price of this vfd decreased a lot but the working remains the same of this converter now this vfd variable frequency drive there are other names of this also the names are like variable frequency uh, variable speed drive okay adjustable speed drive adjustable frequency drive and ac drive okay now here we are going to discuss working principle and block diagram of variable frequency drive you can see here in this block diagram the variable frequency drive can be divided into four main parts first one is the rectifier okay here as we all know rectifier is a device which converts ac into dc the most common application of rectifier is our mobile charger okay which takes ac of 220 to 240 volt 50 hertz and converts it to a dc voltage of 12 volt or 5 volt depending upon the input supply of the device with no frequencies because it is a dc it also consists of uh, diodes then uh, you can use converter also here in rectifiers with firing angles like scrs etc silicon control rectifiers etc you can use diodes and thyristors in to convert okay or to control the output voltage next is intermediate circuit okay we are going to see in detail this what it includes then inverter inverter what it does it convert it is the reverse of the rectifier it converts the dc voltage okay to three phase or single phase ac voltage now ac voltage here why it is required because the input to the motor is ac either three phase or single phase mostly for three phase induction motor vft control is used 
so motor required three phase supply so inverter is used here now control circuit is important control circuit for maintaining the firing angles of these okay then maintaining the angles of also inverter switching states of inverter etc now we are going to see how it works yeah here uh, okay so before going to that this vfd is a type of motor speed controller it will drive induction motor by varying the frequency and the voltage supplied to the electric motor okay by varying the frequency and by varying the voltage supplied to the electric motor it has a rectifier also we know intermediate circuit and inverters okay to convert okay dc into ac and ac into dc now here rectifier first part okay this rectifier now here the supply voltage applied to the rectifier okay is a three phase alternating voltage or a single phase alternating voltage okay ac voltage with a frequency of 50 hertz or 60 hertz depending upon the region okay in india it is 50 hertz now we also know that the rectifier is a circuit it converts the alternating voltage into direct voltage okay ac or ac into dc now rectifier is made up of diodes and thyristors to convert ac supply into dc next is the intermediate circuit it is also called as dc bus or dc link okay between the rectifier and inverter because output of the rectifier is dc input to the inverter is dc so we have to use a dc link in order to avoid the loss of the dc current or voltage so it is also called as dc link and can be seen as a storage facility okay from which the motor is able to draw its energy via the inverter okay by using the inverter it can be built according to three different principles okay depending upon the rectifier and inverter okay now the three principles are first principle is that in which it converts the rectified voltage here which is dc okay into a direct current sometimes what happen the output of rectifier is not a pure dc so it converts it into a pure form okay which is the direct current okay which is less pulsating having less ripple factors next is stabilizing or smoothing the pulsating dc okay here pulsating dc voltage and places it at the disposal of the inverter okay now here we are going to get some kind of pulsating okay or less pulsating dc voltage and it has okay it, this intermediate circuit can be used as a stabilizer okay which is used for smoothing the pulsating dc okay and give back to the inverter and last uh, principle which it can be used is that which converts the constant dc voltage of the rectifier okay to a variable ac voltage here okay these are the three uh, principles or the applications where we can use intermediate circuit and this is basically a dc link or dc bus the last uh, the sorry the third part is inverter okay inverter is the main part of the variable frequency drive okay as it is you can see here <laughs> we require input voltage to be alternating so this is the main part by the by default so the inverter <coughs> process here it represents the final stage okay in terms of generating the output ac voltage and frequency okay now this inverter it will generate the alternating voltage okay 
taking the input from the intermediate circuit okay which will be uh, pulsating or pure dc voltage or current okay and it will give the alternating voltage to the motor because motor requires ac voltage at its input okay now the last part is control circuit now the control circuit or you can also call it as a control card is the fourth main component here okay of the frequency converter or variable frequency drive okay now this control circuit is used okay you will see here this control circuit can be used for uh, performing four different operations first operation is that first operation is the control of frequency converter semiconductors then it is also used for data exchanging between the frequency converter and the peripherals okay different parts also it can be used for gathering and reporting fault messages okay messages from rectifier inverter and intermediate circuit if there is in fault it will gives a message and we can control it okay then next is carrying out protective functions for the frequency converter and the motor okay this also consists of different semiconductors okay microcontroller microprocessor etc these are uh, inbuilt with different logical or sequential logics in order to control the operation of all the things okay now introduction of microprocessor here in this variable frequency drive have increased the speed of control circuit okay significantly it increases the number of applications suitable for different drives and reducing the number of necessary calculations okay with microprocessor uh, application the processor is integrated into frequency converter and it will be always be able to determine the optimal always sorry it will be able to determine the optimum pulse pattern for each operating stage okay so this will this logic or this circuit can gives us optimum pulse pattern for different operating stages so we have seen how the vfd control method works okay different parts the functions of different parts and now we are going to have a look on the advantages disadvantages and application of variable frequency drives so now this variable frequency what are the advantages okay different advantages are there it not only provides variable speed control but also offers energy saving okay with improved efficiency and simple control now advantages such as improved efficiency is there okay conventional speed control techniques okay using the different uh, methods like variable voltage okay or variable frequency only or pole changing method it wastes a lot of energy as compared to the variable frequency drive so this variable frequency drive is used in industries to increase the motor efficiency and conserve a great amount of energy also it is used for precise control okay it because it allows a tighter control of the speed using a sensor to run the motor okay at a very efficient speed okay which cannot causes any hindrance and increases the production of the speed in the industries it also limits in rush current okay in rush current are basically huge starting current okay drawn by induction motor during its startup so it is also this in rush current are 5 to 8 times greater than its rated current so this current can damage the windings of the motor now this vfd here in this case can safely limit the starting current and it is used in one of the methods of induction motor starting also now the ne next advantage of vfd is that it extends mechanical life okay so basically it can safely start and stop the induction motor okay with gradual change in speed without any mechanical jerks so because of which the friction will be less and the life of the motor will increase then is 
reduced maintenance okay so as we know that VFD is giving smooth operations of motor okay it performs smooth operations so it will reduce the mechanical stress and eliminates the jerks that eventually reduce the maintenance required for such motor okay so this reduces long term cost also power factor improvement is there in VFD okay now we know that when the power factor is less it causes reactive power which is a loss okay that means the energy is wasted in the form of heat also induction motor as it is have working on induction effect it has a low power factor now VFD here improves the power factor to utilize the power more efficiently also it can be used for protection from different overloads over voltage and phase loss okay and lastly it is easy to install okay these are very easier and operate since they are programmed during manufacturing with easy to operate and friendly user interface okay these are there are also disadvantages of variable frequency drive okay firstly which is a <laughs> initial cost it is very high okay it is very higher than the other methods conventional methods because it is kind of advanced now in case of PWM based AC output okay it is not pure sinusoidal it can create stress in the windings of AC motor okay which can heat up and degrade the winding insulation therefore a special motor with improved insulation design rated for PWM inverter is required for running with VFD so motor design comes here okay, which also increases the cost there are harmonics okay it will create harmonic because we are changing the frequencies and voltages also because of the non-linear current drawn from the rectifier circuit it creates a distortion in the supply which will affect the electrical equipment connected in the parallel so it also requires extra harmonic filters operation is complex okay we all we know that it is a user friendly interface but it cannot compete with the diet online startup okay or simple push button operation because complexion in operation is there uh, last is we also know that the circuitry used in the variable frequency drive is sensitive and its operation is affected by extreme cold or heat okay so in region where there is extreme cold or heat the operation will be affected so it also requires additional measures to cope up with the this environment now we are going to have a look on the applications of variable frequency drives okay the main function we know that it changes the supply frequency with respect to the voltage now the applications are it is used for controlling the speed of induction motor okay now whose speed depends only on the frequency first of all that okay so in this case of this motor we can use VFD it is used for a precise motor speed control okay because it is giving smooth starting and stopping okay then the precise speed control is also used in the cooling system to maintain the temperature it is also used in lift and escalators because it gives smooth start and stop feature they are also used for water pumps okay also for crusher in mining also it used for hoists and crane okay for precise control of speed and positioning so this is the concept about VFD and the basic thing which we need to take keep in mind that we have to maintain the ratio of voltage and frequency at a constant value for that VFD is used okay now next is the rotor resistance starter or starting of induction motor now this is the kind of rotor side control of induction motor so we have seen the control techniques which is on the stator side now we are going to have a look on that techniques which is or which rely on the rotor side of induction motor 
now this rotor resistance control method is one of the among the various methods for speed control of induction motor now in this method of speed control the rotor circuit resistance is varied okay by connecting a variable external resistance this method is only applicable for slip ring or wound rotor induction motor okay because it has end rings at the shaft or the rotor end and in case of a uh, spiral gauge induction motor rotor winding terminals are not available for external connection so its speed cannot be regulated by this method rotor resistance control method so this is only applicable for slip ring induction motor now we are going to have a look on how it works the principle of rotor resistance control of induction motor we know that the torque in an induction motor is depending on the rotor circuit resistance okay in case of uh slipping induction motor because it has a high starting torque so the resist depends it depends upon the resistance okay if the resistance is high torque will be high resistance is low torque will be low and so on also the maximum torque is independent of the rotor resistance but it depends on the slip at which the maximum torque occurs okay which is directly proportional to the rotor circuit resistance so this is the relation of torque and slip so if we change the rotor resistance r okay or r2 we can say r in we have taken it as here r1 r2 r3 if we change the rotor resistance the maximum torque will remain constant but the slip will increase here okay now figure you can see here it shows the torque and slip characteristics for three different rotor resistance r1 r2 and r3 okay now in this figure you can see the maximum torque is same for the rotor resistance r1 r2 and r3 okay but the slip is increasing from point a to point b and c so now this means that increasing the rotor resistance results in increase in the slip understood so when we increase r1 r2 and r3 the value of slip is also increasing now here increase in this slip means the reduction in induction motor slip because we know that at a starting slip is 1 so now at the starting of induction motor the speed is 0 but the slip is 1 so as soon as the slip will increase the speed of the motor reduces so slip when it will increase it will increase when resistances r1 r2 r3 increases thus we can say that by rotor resistance control method we can achieve variable speed at a constant torque okay torque will not change it will be constant which is required and essential okay in case of stator voltage control and frequency control the torque decreases or it increased okay things happened but here we require a constant torque which is satisfied by rotor resistance control and speed is changing so now this is the reason this method is suitable for constant torque drive now also it can be noted that from the about this characteristic starting torque increases with increase in the rotor resistance okay we can see here as rotor resistance increased starting torque is also increasing okay now we can see here r1 is greater than r3 so the most greater is r1 so as resistance increased starting torque is also increased okay 
so if for this method is advantages where we require high starting torque so there are many applications where we require high starting torque and at that applications we can use rotor resistance control of induction motor for slipping induction motor now we have seen the advantages of this method okay advantages we can see here the advantage ma main advantage is that the motor torque capability remains unaltered or unchanged even at low speeds okay <coughs> because torque is constant only other method which has this advantage is vfd okay so after vfd we can use rotor resistance control but the cost of this method is very low as compared to very uh, as compared to the variable frequency drive control and because of this low cost and high torque capability at low speeds this is employed in the applications where high starting torque is required which are cranes okay then different drives and other intermittent load applications but this method has some disadvantages okay now here we can see that the disadvantage where are there this method of rotor resistance control it cannot be employed for speed control of serial cage okay we know that and the reason is that it has no end rings okay or the no or there is no provision of supply to the rotor okay rotor end rings this is because of the non availability of rotor winding terminals for external resistance connection okay so basic disadvantage is that it cannot be applied for spiral induction motor it is only applicable for slipping induction motor and also this method is very not very efficient okay there are losses in external resistances and losses in carbon pressures okay when we are working at high slip operations okay which causes wastage of energy so this method is consuming energy a lot and it is wasting energy a lot rather than the vfd control okay so this is the thing which i have we have learned up to now now the last thing remaining in this chapter is that we have already covered the speed control of induction motor up to rotor resistance control okay now the last thing is how we can reverse the slipping induction motor which means we can reverse the rotation suppose your motor is working on a clockwise direction we can alter it to anti clockwise direction just by changing the okay supply or the input which is feeding to the motor okay now okay here they have written three phase induction motor rotation can be reversed by changing any of the any two of the three lines okay which means r y b okay so we can change any two line r y or y b or r b okay which feeds the power to the induction motor now the common practice is changing the line 1 and line 3 for example r and b so now there are different instances where the motor needs to be run in different directions other like clockwise or counter clockwise direction for that purpose for this reversing purpose reverse starter is required so now what is a reverse starter okay we have seen the different starters for induction motor okay the starter limits the starting current it will uh, help the motor to Uh, or it will protect the motor from hazardous starting current uh, effects now there is a reverse starter the starter which we have seen like direct online starter or transformer starter star delta starter are forward starter okay which runs the motor in a clockwise direction if suppose we need to run the motor in a anti clockwise direction we require reverse start now this reverse starter are Two to three pole contactors, in which one of the contactors contain one set of overloads. Okay, now these both contactors it should contain a set of normally closed auxiliary contacts along with the normally open sealing contacts. These normally open 
close contacts will be used to provide the means of interlocking okay now the auxiliary interlocking which we have seen which we are going to see is wired in series with the opposite coil okay now here we can see that there are different contactors okay here we can see reverse rotation or forward rotation okay this is the push buttons okay and these are the interlocking okay this is a normally closed switch which is normally closed at the time of starting which is which means it is normally on now this method of wiring the coils through the opposite okay wiring the coils through the opposite auxiliary normally closed contacts here you can see prevents the coils of starter from being energized at the same time which could be very dangerous if it is not wired then okay if it will be dangerous if it is not wired correctly now this kind of reversing starters it contains a mechanical interlocking device okay which gives or which is means to lock the lock out the coils from being pressed at the same time now there are different buttons here you can see this is a stop button okay so circuit is on here this is a kind of ladder diagram plc diagram this is a rung here you can see this is the push button currently it is on these are the different okay contractors you can see f and r having coils which are normally open now the thing main is here is energizing of this coil so when you push button f this coil will energize okay and then forward operation of the motor will happen similarly when you push this reverse button reverse coil will energize and the reverse operation will happen now the wiring should neatly be done that both the things should not on or pressed at the same time okay if this is pressed this need to be unpressed and so on now from this diagram you can see okay the contractors controlling the forward or reverse rotation okay these are the contractors these are controlling the forward and reverse rotation of the motor can be started by pressing the forward push button or reverse push button okay as i told earlier if the forward push button this f is pressed power will be sent to the coil okay through the reverse auxiliary contact okay power will be sent to the coil through the reverse auxiliary contact like here reverse auxiliary contact the coil will be energized through the forward normally open seal contact okay here this one formally open seal in contact so now at this time the reverse push button this reverse push button has been isolated out of the circuit because the forward auxiliary contact is open so the reverse contact here contractor cannot be energized simultaneously at the same thing at the same time the forward contractor is running okay so it avoids simultaneous pushing of this buttons okay now in order for the reverse rotation you can see the reverse push button this push button needs to be pressed and it will turn the motor in reverse direction 
okay now the stop push button must be pressed releasing the power in this stop push button it should be pressed releasing the power from the normally open seal in contact okay now this normally open seal in contact this is the normally open seal in contact of forward this is the normally open seal in contact of the reverse okay so now in order to stop this push button this should be pressed okay so it will release the power from the normally open seal in contact of the forward motor starter this is how the reversal of the induction motor is been done and so we have done for today if you have any doubts you can ask okay or you can message or you can contact me so go through this listen to the lecture okay carefully so that you will understood the theory part okay because a lot of theory has not been which is quite impossible to put up here okay i have not put it all the theory but if you listen to the lectures carefully you can get the idea of the theory part so we have seen the applied frequency changing method we also seen vfd control the parts the advantage disadvantage application and we have seen rotor resistance okay starter or control of motor with advantage disadvantage and applications and lastly we have seen the reversing of three phase induction motors so that's the wrap for the day so okay i'll sign out here and you just watch the lecture goodbye and take care